What is pussy poppin', you beautiful humans? My name is Ariane Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon, and welcome to another piping hot episode of Sippin' the Tea. Uh, <laughs> we uh, sip the tea, and our guest, uh, Spill the Tea! Mm. <laughs> Guys, I am so honored, excited to have this beauty in studio with us today. Singer, songwriter, actress, the whole gamut, really. So everybody give a really big welcome to Miss Julie Mintz. Hey, hey girl. girl. Hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hi. Hey, Mama. Hi. You guys have such upbeat energy. We're yeah. about to get you upbeat, don't okay, you worry, Okay, I am. I'm getting ready. It's okay, girl. Just sip your tea, girl. Okay. So I want to I wanna kind of start with a little background on you and how a, a little girl from Texas ends up in Hollywood. I know it's a long journey, so just take us through it. And yeah. It's, it's very interesting Corpus to me. Christi. Yes, I'm originally from Corpus Christi, Texas. My How parents many people still live there. there. <laughs> How many people up in it's there? It's so small. It, it has like a very small town feel, but it's actually like a quarter of a million people okay. live really? there. But it, okay. yeah, it's, it feels like a small town okay. even now when I go home. And But I mean, I just always grew up um, like playing piano and singing in choir and doing ballet. I was always just really artistic and creative and but I never really saw myself necessarily doing it as a career because um, both of my parents are pretty like my dad's a doctor and my mom was a school teacher so I ne didn't necessarily think that I would have a creative job but what, um, now here I am yeah I mean when <laughs> wait, you wait but no but she actually she actually well, you went to school mm. yes yeah, so that's the thing so um, I went to college and I majored in neuroscience and behavioral biology which I think is probably a result of having more academic parents you got brains girl <laughs> Beauty of I brains. did. I always did really well in school. That came easily to me. Was that a driving force from your parents pushing you to to continue education, or was that something that you were just mentally and like every aspect of life wanted to actually do? I feel okay. I feel like I was always an overachiever. There you go. See, it's Which, not always the parents. Sometimes no, you want to follow a path. I've always been. I, I think I've calmed down a lot, which I'm really glad about, but I was definitely, I think I was just born a perfectionist, which I've realized is not a good thing. I think it can like, it, I think being a perfectionist has its dark side. Totally. Yeah, which I've learned now as an adult, but you don't really know when you're a kid and you're like overachieving and like. You're kind trying of, to put your hands in multiple pies yeah, and trying you're to kind see of, where, what sticks. Yeah, and you're just like, I don't know, you're just figuring yourself out. And sometimes you think that like, achieving is what will make you happy. I agree with that. So why didn't what, what why not neuroscience? Why 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 are you here today well, then, talking about that's songs the thing. And yeah, music? I realized like I was in college and I was like, "Oh, I get such good grades. I'm really good at this." But I was like, it's not really fulfilling me or making me happy. That internal and so, yeah, I like passion. just realized it took me I mean, I think when you're 18, you don't necessarily know yourself that well so it kind of took me that long to realize that just because I was like achieving things on paper it wasn't fulfilling me and so that's when I started looking back and like what did I really enjoy doing um, as a child and so I knew that I loved singing and music and so then that's when I started what was writing your parentals? music. Your parentals? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> were they like oh yeah girl. Did you move so when you made that connect you were like all right so I, this is working on paper, this is fantastic. Yeah. But it's not, you know, filling me up mentally, emotionally. Would you like, yo, I'm, I'm bouncing, I'm out. I'm gonna go to Hollywood? Or was it like, did you start the transition? No, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to LA for the summer, like when I was still for in the college. For the summer, yeah, girl. They were I like, said that. They were like, you can go if you have a job. Which I did, like okay. I had a jo like a summer job. Where did you work? Um, I worked at a management company that managed actors, like a really big management company. They managed Brad Pitt. Oh. And I remember I met Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, like oh, when was, they that, were. That, that, I think the they were just dating. That's the hater. Yes, I was Iconic like. Iconic couple. I liked them. Oh my god! Yeah, I was totally starstruck. Um, and then I started going on auditions immediately and booked a movie, like the second week I was here. So then, of course, I was like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got this Hollywood thing figured out. Turns out it's it's, diff it's always it's a really like, hard. beginner. I don't want to say it, luck. No, it was beginner's luck, for uh, sure. Yeah, because I feel like you hear people's stories who say that they come here and, like, on their first or second audition, yeah. they're like, I booked something major. And then after that, it's like, 
Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Maintaining. Yeah. Like maintaining. that maintaining. Oh, yeah. Then you're like, oh, wait, why has it been a year and I can't get another job? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, were you, but you were booking those acting roles just to probably compile cash so you could actually go in. Yes. Yeah, so I knew that, like, I wanted to do music, but I was kind of just like, I just wanted to be here and, like, figure out. Did you know anybody out. in that music realm? Because that's such a lofty... No. Mind. To say, I, I want to be a musician. It's like, oh, who do you know here? I didn't know anyone doing it's anything. I love these stories, though, because it's kind of like you just threw yourself in. No, but I, d I will say, like, I approach... I approached everything with my same type A way that I did school. So, like, I think even before I came out here to do my summer job, like, and I was still in Atlanta where I was going to college, like, I had already, like, printed my resumes and, like, stapled them and, like, oh. mailed them to agents. And, <laughs> like, ready, honey. like I had, ready. like, a book from, like, you know, to, like, who to mail them to with, like, my cover letters. I was always really psycho like that. That's some good it, advice, though, for people. You, yeah. You think? I, but you know what? I think I also burned out on that because now, I'm just like, I can't be bothered to do stuff like that anymore. You kind of more city of the pants flow vibe now? Yeah. I think I just did that for so many years and I'm just like so, so tired of approaching life that way. But maybe it's good. Like I, I approached the first part of my life that way and now I'm just like, Balance. I don't need to hit it that hard. It is, it's, it's, I guess it's about figuring out like what works for you. Yeah. I'm very similar with my personality. Like, I knew I always wanted, wanted to entertain people, but I'm like, okay, I have to go to school. I have to do it like this, and it has to be X, Y, and Z. But being in entertainment, it is very just like things can, it's never overnight. Yeah. But you know how things can just change. Like you get a phone call and you're like, okay, you're going to be going on tour tomorrow. And you're like, whoa, it's the only, you know, job where things can just change. And that is so true. Kind of have to go with the flow. Yeah, that is actually how my music career like really started. It was just my neighbor. Yeah, so your was, neighbor, Mr. Moby. Yeah, like, that's iconic. Like super so like successful. Take us. I've I've read the story, but I want to kind of just yes. for those watching get a get a little get a little juice on it because that's kind of serendipitous. I would. Well, say. and actually, I feel it like it wasn't him that you met in the driveway of yeah. the driveway. And and that was actually like I would say in more of a downtime where I was just like had kind of burned out on like being like the totally like go get like type A go getter you're like saying you're in a down like yeah. a, that was a down place for you at that time. Yes, and like cuz you know trying to like being in the entertainment industry and like it even if you are like type A and like trying to make things happen you don't have a lot of control over it. So when then, they're not yeah. happening and you're no. you're hitting a wall like that and I'm it just can like, be in my little rental house and I'm like okay there are no more resumes to send like this is not so you happening. You kind of hit a peak on on the wall and yeah. like, this is not rock bottom, so to speak, but you hit a point where you're like, oh, what more can I do? Exactly. Like, I was just, I mean, I was still writing songs alone in my bedroom, basically. Um, and I always write good songs when I'm depressed, but there, there was nothing I happening. I listen to your album, my... girl. It's very, but we're going <laughs> to get to that. But, uh, no, but we'll get to that in a second. So somebody so then, pulls in your driveway. Yeah, a guy is in my driveway, and it's on a Sunday afternoon, and I'm like, so I go out there to see what's going on. He's like moving my trash cans out of the way, and um, he's like caught red-handed. He's like, so sorry, um, I'm trying to go to a party at the castle across the street. That's fancy. <laughs> well, <laughs> fancy. I, okay, um, I did not live in a castle. I lived in like a crooked rental house where like the floors were sloping, but he was like, <laughs> it just happened to, be, it happened to be across the street from castle so he was like that's very hollywood though isn't it luxury and then like mm -mm, a girl. tiny house like, it's like that juxtaposition between that <laughs> yeah is fascinating to i me. know it's so hollywood it really is <laughs> yeah there's like every yeah. style of yeah. yeah and so um anyways he was looking for parking which is also so la that he's gonna just park in my driveway so he was like come to the party come to your neighbor's party with me and i'm like no no i don't know him i don't want to go did you know who moby was um Yes, I had heard of Moby. Sorry, I just have to interrupt. I have been <laughs> thinking that Glitty was a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> you do it because she's so little. <laughs> I'm shook. Not, wait, not a mouse or a, little, or a rat, but a cat. <laughs> okay. Well, that way, wait, that's a first. I, I'm sipping the tea. Wait, it, Let's just prove that it's a dog. I don't know wait, why. I mean, a cat. She lost her train of thought because she was thinking it was a cat. Girl. I just glanced over and was like, it's a dog. It's a puppy. It's, it's a puppy. Oh, it's a puppy. oh she's an eight. Wait, it's not a puppy. No. If she's eight. She's eight. Okay. She's an eight-year-old cat dog girl. Okay, I just need to get that out there. She needed it out. All okay, right. we're back, guys. Okay. Mr. Moby. 
Um, I knew who he was. I knew that he was an iconic electronic musician, but um, I didn't know that much about him. Okay. Otherwise, and I had heard that he had bought the castle in my neighborhood. Were you on the on the prowl? <laughs> no. Was this just a beautiful convenience of like, yes, I've no, been looking to get in that castle? I man. actually really wasn't. Okay. No, because when the guy was like, do you want to come to your neighbor's party? I was like, no, absolutely not. I don't like, know him. Okay. That's so weird. Okay. No, that's not my style. And he he just really wanted to park in my driveway. So he was like, please let me park here and you can come to the party. And I was like, I don't want to go to a stranger's party. <laughs> but he dragged me there. And my neighbor turned out to be really lovely and, so, and we became friends yeah. okay. no, 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 no. and now because you end up working for him so yes. how like that's so ironic you not wanting to go to the party a guy parking in your driveway and then all of a sudden you I are know. doing background vocals and fast yeah, yeah. How, by the way isn't that totally the opposite of like type a like sending people your resumes and like just you know going well, crazy listen, it is i want to hear the story but i will say i want to touch on that though because I don't think there's anything wrong with the a middle ground of type A and and just right. You have to be open to both. Present. Yeah. Because well, and you have to be ready of, for your opportunities a thousand too. Thousand percent. But I think you're similar like that. I like to keep things within control and tightness as well. Seems like you do too. Yeah. But I think that's a grounding for moments like that. Yeah. Maybe being aware that that is a moment. Because sometimes you might not even be aware that's a moment, right? That is, is true, that, like, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes you might be, oh, like, oh, he wouldn't want me to sing background. That's actually really true. And go back to your really house true. and never see the man in the castle again. That but is really true. Like that. And it's interesting because I w wasn't very hungry to be like, oh, yes, I really want to go to the party at my neighbor's house because I know he's in the music business. You trained yourself. You just didn't even know it. Okay, that's yeah. Actually. I wasn't, and though. And you did that, too. And I yeah. think that's one of the traits that I love about you because it's like, your drive is just all there, but sometimes, you know, you, we all just got to let bait. Yeah. I don't think I have that totally, like, mercenary side to me that I'm just, like, trying to use people for things. I don't get so, that bad. Yeah, no, so... Not at all, but sometimes um, things are just, like, you manifest it, you know? You're working hard. You hit. You said you would hit, a, like, a moment where you're like, okay, what's next? You're working hard. You're doing everything that you possibly can. And it's just, like, sometimes we think that the pathway is this way. But yes. when really, it's like, you know, if you the just... The pathway is across the street in the castle, <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Right across the road. So how the turnaround, from what I read, was fast. He's yeah. like, no, like, did you, did you show him your music? Like, how so did that we, discussion So we happen? really became... Um, friends at first, and he's just so friendly, and he would email me a lot and Girl, be like, "Wait, wait, wait, friends or friends?" No, oh my god, <laughs> no, <laughs> totally I'm friends. But speaking of tea, he's he loves tea, and no, like real tea, not like spilling the tea, you guys. He would be like, <laughs> the, literally the next day, he's like, "Would you like to come over for some tea and oh, yoga?" Oh, you come on some sip of the tea, chat. <laughs> I love that because it's like you know he's offering you tea. It's usually a little suspect when guys are like, "You want to go have some drinks?" Oh, oh my god, I know. He, no, he was he such don't look a gentleman. Like he don't look like a turn out Mr. Moby. <laughs> no. His fans, though, might be. Wait, oh, yeah. His fans look oh, yeah. very interesting. He's ha he has some. He has, like, a diverse oh, yeah. of. I mean, he has amazing fans, and yeah. he has, like, some super fans, and then he has, like, some, like, over the edge fans that have then spilled over to me. Oh, you got some of them. Yeah. So in the, in the realm of being with Moby, what's some of your highlights? What are some of the oh, best things gosh. that you've done? Like, top two. Okay, well, so right after I became friendly with him, he asked me to sing with him on The Tonight Show. That was, like, the most exciting thing. She's like, girl, wow. I'm out of my rut now. <laughs> like, I was just like, I had to reread the email. Like, I was like, is this addressed to me? Like, I'm going to sing on The Tonight Show, so that was amazing. She just wound her window down in her bathroom. Yo, <laughs> that is man a huge, in the castle. That is a huge accomplishment. Oh, my gosh, it was incredible. And then since then, we've done, like, most of the late night shows, and then I got to sing at the Hollywood Bowl with him. Wow. And actually, I used to um, do, like, a visualization of singing at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, and then... And you did it. Girl, yeah, and then he... he Asked me to sing at the Hollywood. Well, I got to see you at the Walt Disney Hall. Yes, and then last year we did the Walt Disney Concert Hall with the LA Philharmonic, which that was, was spectacular. So beautiful, yeah. And then you came out with an album. Yes, and then Moby is was totally the driving force for me making an album because when I started singing with him, so I had already been playing solo shows for years and writing my own songs, which is kind of part of the thing of like the being prepared. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I wasn't just some rando. Like oh. I think I can sing. Like, I had been doing the journey for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So 
even singing backup for him, he would come to my solo shows and support me. And he was like, why have you not made an album yet? You have such great songs. And I was like, I don't know. I was always really confused about that part of the business. About the creation of an album or about putting yourself out there as a solo artist? Um, no, because I mean, I kind of had been a solo artist, but just very like locally, okay. you know, I would play local shows. It was more the business aspect gotcha. of it. Like I was like, do you have to have a record deal? Like, do you need a record label to make an album? I didn't really get that part of it. And so he was just like, OK, I'll produce your album. We'll just make it in my studio. And amazing. We'll That's awesome. Yeah. So throughout the the foreground of you with Moby in the background, this whole putting together the album was happening. Yes. And now yeah. we have abandoned all hope of fruition. Yes. Which is, which is a little morbid, girl. I know. But for somebody so bubbly, what, what is the, the, the ethos behind that? What does that mean? Yeah, so abandon all hope of fruition. I know, it sounds so morbid, but it, when you understand what it means, I think it actually has like an uplifting side. Okay. Because it's basically saying, it's kind of what we've been talking about today. It's saying that if you can let go of what you think you need like your all your ideas of the, these things that you think that you might need in order to be happy so just like abandon your hopes of like all these ideas you have and just accept what you have now and try to appreciate those things Amen. That, you can, that. Amen. You can yes. like have some happiness Amen. now. Girl, you, you, need tell, you, you need to tell say, them right get now. That little bit there. Yeah. And no, but by the way, it is really hard to do. Like it's something I feel like I have to do on a daily basis. Because we all do it. We're like, oh, I'm gonna be so happy when I have X, Y, and Z in the future. But I feel like it's it's such a cycle a, that you get saying, stuck in because then it's all, you there are always more things to want. So a thousand percent. So I feel like if you can just kind of try to interrupt that and and Break like, the cycle just yeah, a little bit. Just be and like, like, give me, give some, give some words of advice for the people. Oh Come on. I feel like right I there, am. Girl. Okay, I am not like. Yeah, it, you, you know, to me, but I think what there's something yeah. there. Okay, well, because definitely my thing for sure had been like specifically. I always felt like I needed to be in a love relationship. Talk about spilling the tea. Oh girl, we're about to spill that tea, um, honey. You know, and if I didn't have that, I was like convinced that I wasn't going to be happy, and and that's what a lot of my songs were about. So I decided. Um, let that go. Abandon the hope that I'm going to have that. If I if I really just said, wait, what if I never have that? What if for the rest of my life I'm never in a relationship? You got to ask the way sometimes. Okay. I like that though. Because you know what you... I mean? And I, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> no, gonna, I mean, you, no, you girl, you're gonna say, uh, yes, I'm gonna have everything that it is right. that I want. You know what I mean? Right. Like, in the back, think about how you've been so like, you know, resume driven and what you've wanted, and then how like it, you how you got it was completely different how you thought it was gonna yes. happen. Yes. So if you be resume about saying this is the man that you want, you'll get it, and maybe it's not the way that you think. It's, it's true. Come. It's also like you you can't control like the package that you exactly. think it's gonna the be. The package. Well, speaking of packages. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's uh, sip a little because that leads me to the next topic, honey. Mm -mm. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Mm. Oh. So not only is she uh, a music girl, you're, you're writing a bit of a book, honey. Yes, a I am. A little book, and I, uh, a little birdie says it's uh, you know little 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 bit saucy and spicy. It's dating in Hollywood, dating celebrities, date. Girl, yes. Girl. Okay, well, we so. Want names. <laughs> no, I can't name names. Oh, girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Basically so. Real girl. Oh, here's the thing. So, because my music does have like a really dark side, and I like to express that in my music, but and I. Her exterior is like so bright. Right, and, and I like have this kind of upbeat side, okay. and so. And I feel like I have so many ridiculous dating stories. Like, if you've lived in. As I'm sure you both know, if you've lived in Hollywood long enough, mm, you girl. get some pretty hilarious. I can spell, but I'd rather just sit. Continue. <laughs> and my my girlfriends and I like all have so many funny stories, and so um, I feel like well, Sex in the City obviously did it amazingly for New York. Correct. Um, but I feel like there hasn't really been a story that's set in the Los Angeles dating nope. world. No. And there's so 
so oh my different. god it is it's really different because you have like the the, the ridiculous celebrity aspect which i think just brings so much comedy yeah. to it that's exciting so where are you at yeah. in the in the process What's... so i have my first draft done and um i like to say that it's sort of a cross between bridget jones diary and sex in the city okay because okay. it has that like really racy side but it's also like the main character is is really funny and endearing do you are know you what i mean this on yourself it's I mean, yes, Little sort ish. of. Like, I feel like you always have to write for what you know. Yeah. But so the, I feel like the difference between Sex and the City is when that was written, um, it was like, if you think about it, I feel like when Sex and the City started, like, they may have had cell phones, but they were like those crazy big, the big ones. ones. Yes. yes. Okay. So like they, okay. So there weren't dating apps. No. no. There, there wasn't, I mean, I don't even think they sexted in Sex in the Girl, City. No, and there like... definitely weren't like sending nudes, which I mean, I kind of hate that that my oh, book is so there, girl. What you got? <laughs> I ha there's like a part of me that hates that my book is so racy because I like to think that I'm like, you know, a classy girl. Somewhere in there. That doesn't mean but you're not classy though. No. Yeah. But it's like representing what modern dating has become. Like in my in my sort of a small of, TV show based it, on this book. In my pitch of the book, I basically say, like, in modern dating, like, flowers and love letters have been usurped by sexting and nudes. That's girl, but it's true. It is it's Come true. On, I just want five texts right now, just so I know. That. Oh, and so too. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I just really wanted to write about that because I feel like that's what everybody that's dating right now is experiencing. I like that she's coming out from LA because LA is yeah. the one city where in New York I lived there for 10 years. So okay. it's bankers, it's finance, it's right. they're so stiff and mm, yeah, not like that girl. But they're so <laughs> like, it's a different vibe. Right. Actors are um, insane. Oh my god, yeah, I mean I talk about it in the book that like there's so much like narcissism and like everyone in LA is like so infantilized, like everyone has Peter Pan syndrome and like it's just, there's, it's so it makes for such a good story. I when think. do you think that, in, you know, are we going to see that in 2019? So I'm editing my first draft like, right girl, now. I'm exhausted. You just say yes. Okay, it's yes, no. It, Let's uh, go back to I the, am really the, uh, like working a. on finishing Let's it. Go. I know. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, so you're, are you doing this, writing it yourself? Oh, yes. You're going to school for this, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually in a UCLA class right now trying to finish the, trying to edit the, the draft. Writer, singer, fashion. I, I love fashion. Fashion. Give us a, tell us about fashion. Tell us. So you, uh, you know, you've, I, um, I've seen that you've been going to fashion week. Yes. So I got to go to my first fashion week. Um, at the end of last year because my album came out yeah um, which was just amazing like I've always loved fashion my mom um, my mom was a beauty queen and yes Texas <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> real yes real my girl. mom was actually Miss Michigan but um, then my parents moved to Texas and I was born in Texas so like I grew up like in the 80s my mom literally when she would take us to school in the morning she would wear like these jumpsuits that had like shoulder pads and like rhinestones oh, she, like, was, she was like so <laughs> real de I mean it was Texas she was the real deal like she never left the house without like full hair and makeup love so like yeah, my sister and I were like raised on fashion. We love it. So to get to go and like go to the shows and see the girls walk, and and so I'm going again in February. Yes, girl. Yeah, we it's might really see you there, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna be there? I don't know, girl. <laughs> You're gonna be just, there. I'm gonna be there. I'll see you there, girl. Yes. I'll see you there. Yeah. So with like just everything that you're doing and with the book, like, can you just tell everybody? Where they can follow you at, where they can get the music, and Down the lens, right girl. here, okay, like yes. just everything, girl. Spill that tea. Um, so my album is called "Abandon All Hope of Fruition," which is a long title. So you can just look me up. You can look up my music on Spotify or iTunes. My name is Julie Mintz, and um, I like to interact with people on Instagram. That's sort of my favorite social Slip media. Slip into those DMs. <laughs> <laughs> That'll give me good stories for my novel. Um, my Instagram is just Julie Mintz as well. Yes, yes. Girl. Okay, see, Miss, I'm so shy, girl. You were over here. Just... She's, everybody got layers. Yes. Everybody got layers. <laughs> and onion. I think that's beautiful to okay, see good. that you can, like, let go of 
the you know the type A thing, but I think the type A trains you well, though. Exactly. Yeah. I think it does, and I think there's nothing to apologize for because it's like this whole growth of just learning who you are. And I'm like, I will be learning to the day I die. Quite frankly, oh yeah, if yeah. you're not for sure, you're dead. Well, on, on that note, girl, like. I got nothing left to say, Chad. Okay, well, uh, let's do a little let's cheersy. Let's do a little cheersy. Uh, cheers. Thank so you fun. for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> you guys can follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew and this little nugget at Glitty Glit because we forgot to introduce our little babies in the beginning. Oh, great. Glitty Glit, not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt Dillon. You can follow me at Matt Dillon 1983 and little Miss Mama at It's Mama 2011. Until next time, guys. On Focus TV Network, sipping the tea. Yeah. Bye, girl. Bye, Felipe. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got the wrong number. Click.